understand this thing comes out there.
see this number present, and I know there's some type of conspiracy going on in our church. Uh, I don't know about we've got eight or ten families out today, and I know they had to call one another for all on the planet at one Sunday like this, so I know there's some type of conspiracy going on in our church. Yeah, I hope so. And they said, well, y'all pray for us. We're going to be gone Sunday. I think we need to pray for us who can't go. <laughs> no, we know it's uh, school's out from now until school starts. We know there's going to be a time for traveling and vacation. We just appreciate the one of the year and the opportunity for people to travel and be on vacation, but also appreciate the ones that are able to be here this hour. And we do need to pray for them. And uh, vacation Bible school is coming up, so be praying for our vacation Bible school. And Miss Sarah, she heads that up. Next Sunday is Father's Day. You know, June, when June starts, it'll be over before you can turn around. And next Sunday is Father's Day. And uh, Tuesday night is our church visitation at 7 o'clock. And you need to read your bulletins, insert in your bulletin about your backpacks if you'd like to donate some to our backpack and read about that. Also be praying for the ones we have on our prayer list. There's a lot of people we certainly need to be praying for. Uh, B.J. Uh, Ballback, an open heart surgery tomorrow at 12 o'clock in Savannah. Be praying for him. And uh, uh, Carrie, her sister, I guess, is still in the hospital in, uh, in Savannah. Uh, with some problem with seizures that she is having. So we pray for her. And uh, Kyle had his operation for his leg surgery, and he's back home, and, uh, and Grace will be praying for them. And the rest that we have on our prayer list, there's a lot of people that's really, 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 really sick. So we thank you today, Brother Orville. We Y'all stand and help us sing in Christ the Lord, please. Thank you. 
remind you guys that we have VBS in two weeks. So um, if you know any children, please invite them to come. Um, we have postcards and door hangers and little invitation cards in the back that you can pick up to give them. Um, there are registration forms to so that we'll know who's coming and what classes they need to be in and if they have any special needs or allergies or anything like that that we need to be aware of. Um, so if y'all will help us to have a good crowd. We have adult classes so all of you can come and be in a class as well. Um, that's going to be June 24th through the 28th. On Sunday night we will have our kickoff and we will have a fellowship after the service. So we ask that all of you bring a covered dish. Um, I think that that's all I really wanted to say was come, invite somebody, bring some food, and we're all going to have a really good time. Our theme this year is Game On, and we've got a little video to introduce you to the theme. My favorite sport is basketball. Amen. We're looking for a good time, vacation Bible school, invite someone to be with us. Invite someone to be with us for vacation Bible school. Have a good time in the Lord. I like that song, uh, He Is Here, don't y'all? You know, the Bible says where two or more is joined together in his name, he'd be in our midst. So we here together and two or more. Might not be too many more than that, but we here today so we know when you come to worship that Jesus Christ is in our midst. And uh, that song go, you know, he's calling out your name. I got to wonder how many names, I wonder if the Flat Hill Baptist Church and God called out this morning. It could be here's not here. But he's still calling your name out. And calling your name out to come out. So this morning we'll be dealing with that, walking by faith with God. And Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5 and 6, and mostly just one verse, verse 5. Enoch, walking faith. Walking faith with God. And that's what that song we just sung was all about. Being here this morning, God's called your name out. You remember Pleasant Hill Baptist Church? He said he called your name out the day to be here this morning. He'll call your name out tonight, he'll call it out again Wednesday night to call your name out. Walking faith is what it's all about. Walking by faith. And it says in... Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And that sounds good, don't it? I thought about that, being called up in the rapture or either being resurrected. I don't know which one I like the best. I'm thinking this called up in the rapture, not going through death, is my first choice. He says, And was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation... He had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, not once in a while, but diligently seek him. Let us go to the Lord again in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity here this morning to worship you. Father, we know that we should be worshiping you every day of the week, but, Father, this is your day for us to worship you. Father, in each time, God, you call us together. You call all your people to worship you. We thank you for that opportunity to worship you and to bring our worship with us today. We want to ask you, Lord, in a very special way to open our understanding. Father, here one today, do not know you as Lord and Savior. This would be the day. Father, we want to praise you for what you're doing in our midst and what you're doing through our church in the lives of your people. We just thank you and praise you for answered prayer. Father, that your name might be glorified in the precious and the holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and amen and amen. In chapter 11, we know this is called the faith chapter. In chapter 11 last week, one, a few verses we had read to you, and the statement was about uh, faith, describing faith. It is a substance. It is the evidence bring the future into our present existence. And that means there's a future heaven out there somewhere. But you know what it does through faith? It brings that future heaven into our now. We don't have to wait till we die to go to heaven. Whenever you're born again and saved, heaven comes down to you. 
I mean, that's your heaven to start with. And faith make that future promise of God real. I really believe in heaven. How about you this morning? Do y'all really believe that God says, I'm going to go away and prepare a place for you? And when I prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again and receive you to myself that where I am you shall be also. That's what Jesus... Do y'all really believe that? Well, that's by faith. I believe God. And by faith, I've never seen this place called heaven. But by faith, I see it with my spiritual eyes. And, and it says, you know, that the promise, he's made me that promise. He's made you that promise. He's made everybody that accept Jesus Christ that promise that, that we will be in heaven. Now, faith is the evidence that brings things which we cannot see into our daily experience of life because our spiritual eyes reaches into the invisible, the unseen, and they become real to our life. We cannot see the unseen, but through our spiritual eyes, I can see the unseen with faith in Jesus Christ. Now, we know the Bible says there'll be a chapter in the Bible that says there's no more. There'll be no sorrow, no more sickness. There'll be no more death. But there'll be some present things. There'll be the rest. And there'll be the rest and rewards. And there will be the release of this old bodies. And there'll also be reunion. You believe that God says that we'll have reunion one day in heaven with your loved ones again? I don't know how we're going to look. He says, when he shall appear, he says that we shall be like him. And I tell you what, if you're like Jesus Christ, you ought to be satisfied. I don't know what we're going to look like, but they're going to be a reunion. And the beginning, I tell you, of the first worship is faith. And we see it's all that in the faith of old Abel. Life, the illustration about uh, the saving faith and all about how to worship man. Now, mankind is always trying to worship God his way. Churches are trying to change the worship of nowadays. Individuals are trying to change it. Well, that was nothing new. That's not nothing new. It started back right outside the gates of Garden of Eden. Cain and Abel. Cain slew Abel. Cain tried to change the way to worship God. So we saw that, what happened, trying to change it. Well, we have this example of faith in Enoch now. And we go all the way back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 5 is a story about Enoch's life in the Old Testament. It is called the walking faith, that he walked with God. Now, saved by faith, but we also walk by faith. And most of the time, <coughs> excuse me, most of the time, you know, as, as Christians, you know, we have the faith God give us this gift to be saved. But you know where our problem comes in at? Every day we don't walk by faith as we should walk by faith. We believe he had enough of faith to save us, so we're going to heaven when y'all just admitted that. But how about every day? Do we really depend on that faith every day? No, we don't. We don't depend on that faith every day. But he says, you know, walking faith, we need to depend on that. Save by faith, walk by faith. As I said, the, the church and, and even Christian day is so confused and are being confused about how to worship. We saw that last week. You know, because they substitute human reasoning far and above the obedience of God and His Word. We know what all come out to be. The principles never change. The definition of faith, trusting what God says. This is the Bible. Not what a preacher says. Trusting what God says and acting upon it regardless of circumstances and consequences. That is faith, what God says. That's biblical faith. Now, Hebrew gives us a survey of the Old Testament in Cain, chapter 4, we read last week. But also, now we're going to jump to chapter 5 in Genesis of O Enoch. And it's called the death chapter in chapter 5. I know that you've read it many times. It's called the death chapter. Uh, and it goes all the way from uh, Adam to Noah and then the flood. Well, there's a phrase that occurs over and over and over in chapter 5 of the book of Genesis, over and over and over again. And you know what it says? And he died, and he died, and he died, and he died, and he died. It's like a funeral bell. You know, it's like a, a drum beat. It's a death march. And he died, and he died. Look back to your forefathers, mothers and fathers and grandparents and great-grandparents and great-grandparents. The same thing is said about you. And he died, and he died, and he died. Just go right on back. And he died, and he died. It wasn't in. And there's one exception in that chapter 5, and that exception is 
Enoch. They're going to be an exception one generation. And that generation is called the rapture of the church. Stops that death march. And then the rapture of the church. Now in chapter 5, it'll say how God's word is true in chapter 5. And how it is true because, you know, back whenever God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, he says, you know, Adam and Eve, you can eat of all the fruit, all the trees in the Garden of Eden but that one. Now, if you eat of that fruit, that forbidden fruit, that day you shall surely die. Well, the devil comes along and says, well, now you won't surely die. You will be as God, and he didn't want you to have that. So they was confronted, as you and I are every day, with the devil's lie or God's truth. We are confronted with that all the time. Genesis 5 and 5 says, And all the days of Adam lived were 930 years and he died. That's Adam. 930 years and he died, just like God said he would. And he died, and he died 930 years. Now we find out, is God's word true? Or is old Satan's lie true? We know Satan's lie cannot be true. Every day we're confronted with the same decision, God's truth or the devil's lie. Every day of our life, and I'll tell you, especially young people today, we're confronting that with church worship. But God says, you know what? Do not forsake the sin of yourself together. If you remember, you ought to be here. That's God's truth. Oh, Satan come along and say, you know what? You're doing pretty good. You're just as good as any rest of them. You don't really have to worship God. You can worship God at home. You can worship God. He'll tell you all kind of lies, but it's still a lie. So you're confronted with that. Are you going to worship God where he told you and how and when he told you to worship? Or are you going to do what old Satan says as a decision? And then we have young people mostly in schools today. Boy, I tell you what, schools and colleges today, we have the most liberal teachers I have ever seen in our colleges today. Thank you for our Christian teacher we have in Pierce County. I appreciate it so much. But you see, there's a lot of liberals. And what is a liberal? A liberal is deny the basic truth of the foundation of whatever type of liberal they are. They deny the basic truth and the foundational truth. And you know what? They'll say, well, you know, there's the evolution. That's where you got started from, a big old uh, ball of mass. That's where you come from because it's evolution. It's taught in our school. It's been taught for many years. That's the biggest lie is ever put upon mankind is evolution. Well, they get kind of sidetracked. They say, well, God done it, but he used evolution. See, that's another lie of Satan. That's a lie. Now, I like to watch these uh, uh, nature pictures. Don't y'all like to watch these nature pictures, all these animals and everything? Old Marty Stauffer used to be one. I like to watch tell you, all these old nature pictures, you know, and every one of them, without exception, will tell you about evolution. Oh, this happened 1,700 million years ago, 4 billion trillion years ago. They don't know how old this earth is. I'll tell you one thing, God made it. How old it is, I do not know. Because God made it, but they don't know either. Nobody knows how old this earth is. There's no such a thing as evolution. Evolution is nothing in the world but a theory to get rid of God. That's all it is. Every way you talk about it, get rid of God. Well, it's, you know, God's truth or the devil's lie. It happens every day in our life. And it says there, we find out in Genesis 5, death, death, death. I said exception. Now, in Genesis chapter 5, verse 21, 22, and Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. Well, Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah was born. Now, mother and fathers... Don't children usually change your life? <laughs> Don't children really change your life? You'll never be the same when one comes in the family. Well, ain't it what neither? You see, it changed our life. And when, when children has come into our family, and it changes the grandparents. You know, because a lot of things, you know, you don't, want your, you don't want your children to be like some things that you do, so you change. Mothers and fathers, grandparents, do you want your children to worship God just like you do? Do you want your children to walk in your footsteps? Do you want your children to be just like you are? Because you are their example, whether you realize or not. Next Sunday is Father's Day, and I'm going to tell you, fathers, whether people like it or not, whether the father realizes or not, whether they accept it or not, God has put you fathers over the household. 
regardless of what this society, this day and time says, a two-headed monster, but you are the head of the family. And I tell you, any father ought to have their children in the house of God whenever the time comes for them to be in the house of God. Right? That's what God says. Remember God's truth of the devil's lie. Where's the fathers at today? All right. As we see this, Methuselah changed him. All right. Verse 23 and verse 24. And all the days of Enoch was 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. 365 years. He didn't die. It stopped in Genesis, the death march, and he didn't die. It says in Hebrews 11 and 5 that he was translated. All of his forefathers, but he was translated. As we know that all of our forefathers has died without exception. But you know what? It is very, very possible that you sitting here today could be that generation that don't see death. Now, I won't be preaching on Revelation chapter 18 about the collapse of the economy of this world. Then talking about collapse of the religious world. Now, the economy of this world in chapter 18. And most Christians do not believe that seven years from today that what I'm preaching on tonight it be the end of the tribulation time of the collapse of the world economy. Now, most Christians believe, that even in our Bible, that Revelation is something way out there in hundreds of thousands of years from now. The rapture is many, many generations from now. But it could be today. And the collapse could be today. It could happen today. Well, it says that Enoch was not. God took him. That's the rapture. In Hebrews 11 and 5, he was translated. He had a testimony that he pleased God. He had a testimony that he pleased God. Now, people, it is very important that you please God. That is very important. Now, did you know it's easier to please God than it is to please people? You know, you can't please people. In fact, I can't even please my own self sometimes. But I can please God. And you can please God. But the question comes, do you? Do you? It said, you know what? He had a testimony that he pleased God. God said whenever Jesus was baptized, he says, you know, heaven's open and the voice from heaven says, this is my beloved son whom I am well pleased. How did Enoch please God? He for you and I today, if you want to please God, which a lot of people do not care anything in the world about pleasing God, in fact, they don't need God. They got everything they need, but they will one day. He walked with God. Now, the three important things, and it walked in salvation. He walked on in sanctification, and he walked out in glorification that's the three keys to walking with God ain't it walked in that's salvation we're in Christ Jesus if you're saved do y'all know that we're walking in Christ Jesus uh, you cannot walk with anyone unless there's a starting time there's a starting place and you start walking with someone there'll be a time when you begin to walk with them there was a time when you began to walk with Jesus Christ in salvation. Is that right? There's a time when you were not saved. There's a time when you started walking with God in salvation. Married. Y'all remember there was a time when you was not married? When you got married, you started walking together? There was a starting point 
walking together. If you save together, you start walking. There's a time of taking steps as you take the day walking with Jesus Christ. Now, Enoch, after he was 65 years old, had a son, he began to walk with God. But, you know, he lived in a very corrupt culture as we live in today, the United States. He lived in the Canaanite culture. I tell you about it, as bad as we're living in today. Remember uh, Cain and Abel? What happened to, to Abel? But you see, we're living in a very, very, very cruel culture, as they did. It got so bad there at the time of Enoch. You know what God said? He said, it's so bad that I'm going to send a flood and start all over again. That's how bad it was whenever he was walking with God. And God said to Enoch, as he said to us, Enoch, I've got a better world than what you're living in. And if you give your life to me, and if you'll walk with me, I'll take you to that world one day. And he says, that's me. That's what I want. An old song that we sing sometimes in the sweet by and by. I think it's a testimony of old Enoch whenever God says, if you walk with me. There's a land that's fairer than day. And by faith I shall see it afar. For the Father awaits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. I believe that's the song that he began to sing to God when he said, you know what, do you want to walk with me? In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8, And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now this is the way that we're saved. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that's not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and then we find out by grace you are saved through faith, and that's not of yourself. It's a gift of God. You see, whenever God begins to stir in your heart, he gave you enough of faith to be saved. It's a gift. It's nothing you stir up yourself, nothing that you grin and bear and try to get faith yourself. He gives you this gift. It's by grace through faith, walking with God. Trust in what God has said. And Amos chapter 3 and 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Agreed, walking together on the same path and the same place. Now, are people pleasing God today? Are Christians pleasing? Are they walking the path that God would have them to walk in time of worship time? Across our nation today, they must agree. As O Enoch agreed. If Jesus Christ was a member of Pleasant Hill Baptist Church, when it got time to come to a work service, where would Jesus be? You answer that and try to get out of it if you can. If you're a member of Pleasant Hill Baptist Church and Jesus Christ was a member of Pleasant Hill Baptist Church and it come time to worship, where would Jesus be? You talk to God about that and try to get out of it if you can. God said to Enoch, you are a great sinner. You know what Enoch said? He said, I agree with you, God. And God said, I'm going to send a great Savior. You know what Enoch said? I agree with you, God. I believe that you will. God said, if you'll trust him by faith, he says, I'll save you. You know, Enoch said, I'll trust him by faith. You know what? Enoch started walking with God. That's agreeing with God. That's pleasing God when you agree with God and quit making excuses for not worshiping God. Can you testify to the saving grace today when you started walking with God? Was there a time that you remember back when you started walking with God? Enoch walked in, that's salvation. But you see, Enoch walked on. He didn't stay there, he walked on, and that is sanctification. That's being more like Jesus every day. The life of sanctification from this world, sanctified unto the Lord. Micah 6 and 8 says, He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doeth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with my God. Christian life is all about walking with God. Enoch, he obeyed God. 
You know, and I, I kind of like that old story so many times. What you see when old Enoch wife told him to go down to the grocery store for milk and bread. You know, you always got to get milk and bread. Pick up some milk and bread. If I ever go off the door and say, get some milk and bread. I always got to get Well, old Enoch went to the grocery store to get some milk and bread. He got the buggy, you know, if I might need something else, and rolled that buggy in the way down the other end of the supermarket aisle, he seen an old man. He said, you know what? They look just like Adam. That looked like my great, 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 great grandfather Adam. So he rolls the old buggy down there. He says, you know what? You look like Adam. He said, well, I am Adam. You see, Adam lived the time of Enoch, 900 and something years old. He said, well, you look just like Uncle, you look like Grandpa Adam. He said, Ann, what can I do for you? Well, Enoch says, you know, I'd just like for you to tell me what it was like in the Garden of Eden before sin. And then, oh, Enoch, seeing Grandpa Adam's tear begin to roll down his cheek. Sadness come upon his heart. He said, son, I want to tell you, two times a day that God come walking in the garden with me and Eve. Two times a day. He said, we walk together. And he said, you know what? That made the Garden of Eden the Garden of Eden when God walked with me. And Oenix said, that's what I want. I want to turn my life into a garden of Eden. I want to walk with God and God walk with me. Do you want your life to be a garden of Eden? If you do, you need to walk with God. Do you want to walk with God? There's things it implies. One thing is life of devotion. First John 1 and 7 but if we walk in light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We walk in the light. It is a devotion. You start walking with God, step by step, in the light of God's word. It's a life of devotion. Did you know your devotion is a time of your secret power, of how much secret devotion life that you have? Every one of us, that is a secret of your power, of your devotional life. God told old Elijah. He said, Elijah, go hide yourself. And the next thing he told me to do is go show yourself. You got to get off and hide yourself in the Word of God before you show yourself to this world. I try to do that every morning, seven days, seven days a week. It also implies a life of separation. Now, there's a lot of people that's not going to come to church regularly. There's a lot of people not going to come to church. And I'm going to make all kinds of excuses. But you know what God's told you and me? Each one of us, he says, in that song we sung, I've called your name. I've called your name. You know what he's saying? I want you, not your neighbor, not your friend, not your wife, not your husband, not your children, not your mother, not your father. I want you. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. That's what he wants you to do. And that's what he wants me to do. There's no turning back. We always look at someone else. Where are they at? What are they doing? What's your... He says, look at you. What are you doing? A lot of times we use it for excuse. Ain't it lived in a very wicked world, about like we're living in the United States today. Life means very little to us today. Romans 1 and 1 says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called me an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Separation means off the horizon. And you know when you're watering down in the valley of sin, you know you don't have very good vision. But when you climb the horizon, when you climb Mount Calvary, you see you get a new horizon. You get a new view. A new view of what God wants you to be like and to walk like. And then old Enoch walked out that is glorification. In Jude chapter 14 and 15, before you reach Revelation, and it says, And Enoch also the seventh from Adam, 
prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. He prophesied that way back in Genesis. To the execution, judgment upon all, to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and to their heirs, and to hear the hard speech which ungodly saints have spoken against him. He's coming back, a judgment upon this earth, and it's going to happen like God says. And Enoch, in this day, in this generation, he said that Jesus Christ is going to come back. He's coming. And he's still coming. Now you believe that he's coming. Genesis chapter 5, he says that he died. He didn't walk with God, and he was not. Jeremiah 7 and 23 says, The Lord, but this thing I command them, obey my voice. I will be your God. Walk ye in all the ways I have commanded you. Again, he's in that. Hebrews 11 and 5 was translation three times. He was translated, he was translated, he was translated. He was not found because they was looking for him. They could not find him. One day that's going to happen. The people are going to be translated. They're going to be gone. I wonder if it was happening while we were here at Plato Hill Baptist Church and Jesus Christ would come back and rapture his saints. You know what? They may be, in a, they may be a husband there waiting for his wife to come back from church, fix dinner for him. She won't come back. It might be, you know, the, the children. It might be, you know, the, the husband waiting. They looked for him. They couldn't find him. He is gone. Do y'all really believe that's going to happen one day? Y'all really believe that's going to happen? God said it's going to happen. Now there's a resurrection and there's going to be a rapture. Which one do you, you prefer? James chapter 2 and verse 19. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devil also believes and trembling. There's a lot of people who believe in the existence of God. There's a lot of people believe in the existence of God as church members. But you're not saved and never will be saved believing there's exist a God exists. Every religious person of the world believes there's an existence of God. They're not saved and they never will be. As I told you before, you'll never be saved by believing there's an eternal God because it takes more than that. It's his son, Jesus Christ, makes Christianity Christianity. You see, the devil believes. I like to ask the people, what's the difference between your faith and the devil's faith? Because he has faith to believe and to believe that there's really a God. And he says the devil and the demons, they believe, but they believed in trembling. They knew what they believed in. What is the difference of people's faith today? Jesus Christ said to his disciples, that believed in God, Jehovah God, all their life and all their ground, and right on back. Jehovah God, Jehovah God, Jehovah God. All the Jewish nation, the Hebrews, believed in But Jesus Christ says to his disciples, you believe in God, believe also in me. You believe there's a God, you do as well. You believe in God, you've got to believe also in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the salvation He's a salvation. He is the man of salvation, the way of salvation. There's no other way to the Father except by Jesus Christ. God has showed this world the existence of God in his nature, but that's not enough. And there's a hard, it's hard to find people today that don't believe they're going to heaven because they believe in the God of the existence of God. They believe there's a God. Do anybody in this church know anybody that do not believe that there's a God? Do y'all know anybody? You don't have to call. Raise your hand if you believe. You know someone that believes there's no God. Everybody believes there's a God. Now, do you believe everyone that you know is going to heaven? Well, what's the difference? They believe in this existence of God. 
they do not believe in Jesus Christ. They have not accepted him as Lord and Savior. They know about him, and they're going to be a lot of children after they reach the age of accountability, follow their mother and father into this same type of religious work. They believe in the existence of God, and God won't send nobody to hell. That is absolutely 100% true. He won't. He sends no one to hell. You make that choice yourself. And your choice is Jesus Christ. There's something sad wrong with someone and say they're saved and believes in Jesus Christ and don't want to worship. And don't want to worship. There's something sad wrong with their intellectual knowledge and their heart knowledge to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because if you are saved, there will be a change in your life. And you will want to worship. Someone don't want to worship and say they're saved. I don't have to say it. This says it. This says it. Are you sure today that you're walking with God? Do you want to please God? Do you want to please God? Well, if you do, walk in, walk on, and walk out with God. I don't know about you, but I tell you what, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to heaven. You're bragging on yourself today. Go, you think you're good. No, I'm not good. The Bible says none is good. No, not one. That leaves me right by myself. I'm not good. But you know one thing? Jesus also said, I got the keys of heaven and hell. What's keys for? Keys to your car. Key, what's keys for? They lock and they unlock. Whenever Jesus Christ says, if you come to me, I'll hold you to my hand. There's no man will pluck you out of my hand. You know what that telling me? Those same hands took that lock and locked me out of hell. And locked you out of hell. But also, it has locked you into heaven. Is that power? the power to lock you into heaven and to lock you out of hell. If you save here today, you can't go to hell. You can't go to hell if you're saved. But you are going to heaven because Jesus Christ has locked you into heaven. You see, that's by faith. I see that. By faith, I see that I'm going to heaven. And I certainly do not deserve heaven. I deserve hell. How about you? But I please God. How'd you do that? Same way Enoch did in Christ Jesus. I believe, he said, I believe, you know what? You are a great sinner. I said, you know what? I agree with you, God. How about y'all? I agree with you, God. I'm a great sinner. But he said, I sent a great Savior. If you'd accept him as your Lord, he said, I had the power to forgive you all sin. And I said, Lord, I, I believe you. I agree with you. I'll accept him. And he did and I did. Did you? What a great God we serve. And it walked in. Walked on. And I tell you what, he walked out. And I'm looking to do that very same thing. How about y'all? As we come with a song of invitation this hour, I hope everybody in here is walking with God. But not only that, to do that, you know what you got to do? You got to please God. We got to please God. And I said, you know, God's not hard to please. He's not hard to please. Just walk with God. And all we got to do is say to God, I decide to follow Jesus. I thank you, Lord, today for those keys He has the power of. Can y'all think about this how great it is that you can't go to hell? Goodness gracious. How about the old sorry sin that you've done last week, the week before last, last month, the last week? How about the bad things you've done and said? You know what Christ has forgiven you for? He's got the power. Now, we'll go through the judgment seat of Christ, and they're going to brush us off and kind of clean us up a little bit. But you ain't got to worry about going to hell. That's the God that we serve. How come people don't want to worship a God like that? 
How can one people say they want to come and give knowledge of what God has done for their life by coming here? You know, that's what you're doing when you come to church. You come to worship, you're saying, this is what God means to me. For me being here this morning, this is what God means to you, to show the world what God means to you. Thank you, Lord, because you mean everything to me. Because if you be here tonight, and God lets me preach on this 18th chapter of Revelation, everything that you're going back home to today and everything that you have today, in chapter 18 of the book of Revelation, is going to be burnt up and blown away. You absolutely going to have nothing but Jesus Christ. Whew. All this old worldly things. This is what you mean to me, God. This is what you mean to me. As we stand and sing this song, hate to quit. precious name is it not thank you Lord Jesus Christ for each one of us here today come back and be with us tonight if you can be praying for those we have on our prayer list there's so many of them Brother Joe Chancey you mind give us a benediction please mm-hmm.